Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about what the deal is with the Drucker stability condition. This is something that's relatively well known, but the question is, what is really going on with this condition? Is this something we need to worry about? Is this something we need to always satisfy? That's what I will talk about here today. And this was developed by Dan Drucker uh, back in the day, about 50 years ago or something like that. And uh, he was a very uh, smart guy. He came up with all kinds of plasticity uh, models and testing techniques. And this is one of the things that he developed as well. And what really that's all about is, is written in the equation shown here on this slide. And we can see that the equation looks pretty complicated. It's just a tensorial product between a stress increment and a strain increment. And they can't be just any stress and strain increments. They have to go together. And it turns out there are different ways to write this equation. This is the way, way that I prefer uh, in, in my own work. So how, how do we really interpret this? What is this all, all about? The, it's kind of easy to explain, actually. If you plot a Kirchhoff stress, which is one of the stress measures that one can define as a function of true strain, then the stress strain curve may look like the red here. And this is the prediction that in this example for the ANSYS YO model with the parameters shown here. If this stress strain curve is monotonically increasing as the strain increases, then under these conditions, this material model, in this case the YO model, is Drucker stable. In my example, I picked a C20 parameters that is slightly negative, and then it ended up with a region here in which we have a negative slope of the stress strain curve, and that's in violation of the Drucker stability condition. Uh, there, it turns out that there are some material models, some simple material models, like the Neohokia and the Aruda Boys A-chain model, that are always stable and always satisfy this condition. But some of the other material models don't satisfy this automatically. And uh, the, the, what you do in a case like that is that you may want to consider the, the possibility that the material model you have calibrated is not going to be Drucker stable. And that's something that's actually hard to prove mathematically because this has to be valid for any increment of strain and then the corresponding stress increment. And that's difficult to prove because it's hard to prove that for all conditions. The unilateral tension is easy to just graphically show it, but it should apply for any deformation mode, not just unilateral tension. And I also want to point out, and this is very important, but the material model can satisfy all the laws of physics, thermodynamics, and all of these things that we really want to satisfy, and still not satisfy the Drucker stability condition. And that's okay. That's not uh, something that uh, one should be totally worried about, because there are materials themselves that don't satisfy Drucker stability, but still, of course, they satisfy the laws of physics. So here's an example of that. On the figure to the left, I use again an ANSYS YO hyperelastic model, and this is a plot from M calibration. The parameters here are shown to the, to the right of the figure. The stress strain curve, Kirchhoff stress goes up and then it goes down. So this is not Drucker stable, but it's a thermodynamically okay material model. Everything looks good besides the drop there. And the figure to the right, I use a slightly different value of C30. The curve it looks about the same, the drops a little bit more here. This is not Drucker stable, of course, but it's not thermodynamically okay because we have now a situation where we have negative stress when the strain is positive. And that's not really uh, allowed for normal materials. If you pull on it, you have to apply a force to pull on it. It doesn't just expand by itself uh, like that. So how would we deal with this? Well, this, uh, the stability condition itself depends not only on the loading mode, but also on the magnitude of the applied deformation. There are cases where a material model, like the figure to the left, is stable at small strains, and then it becomes unstable at larger strains. One way you can explore this is to use the M calibration Drucker stability uh, check. Uh, in this case, you can specify which of these conditions that M calibration should explore. And then it just it examines them up to a given max strain. And in this case, this particular material model on the left, this YO hyperelastic model, is not stable even at some relatively small strains in biaxial tension and compression. So that's good to know because it looks like this is actually fine up to a relatively large strain in uniaxial tension, but it's not stable in biaxial tension in, according to the Drucker condition. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that your finite element program may warn you about this. This is the warning that Abacus provides if you plug in the exact material model that I had uh, on the previous page. It says the specified hyperelastic material model is unstable, and that's good to know, but it's in the DAT file and not everyone reads this very carefully. I also tried to, uh, to run a test case with ANSYS and I didn't see this warning. So if, if you, you can tell me where to find it, let me know, but I didn't see it. So perhaps ANSYS doesn't even warn you about this unless you ask it in a specific way. So that's something to keep in mind too. Finally here, in M calibration, if you uh, want to make sure your material model is uh, Drucker stable, you can add a fitness weight for, for that and I have a video that talks about that, how you can uh, enforce that condition. So to summarize, a material model always needs to satisfy uh, laws of physics, of course, thermodynamics, all of these things. That's uh, given, but there's no rule that the material model needs to satisfy the Drucker stability condition. And uh, the key here is that Drucker stability is just a convenient thing to have. It causes a stress increase if the strain increases. That kind of makes sense for many rubber-like materials, but it's not always true for uh, thermoplastics. And if you want to examine this and you want to enforce it, then you can use M calibration in an easy way to achieve that. Um, that's, that's it uh, for me at this time. If you have any questions about the Drucker stability condition, you can ask them below.